my favorite part too of having a baby. I was lying to my husband because they don't know anything about the female body. You can tell them anything, you know? <laughs> I'd be like, oh, boo boo, there's so much I can't do now that I'm pregnant. I can't have wine. I can't eat sushi. Oh, yeah, I can't get blowjobs either. <laughs> no, I read on the internet they make the baby autistic. It's kind of crazy when you think about how much it takes to make every one of you. And I gotta tell you, most of you, not worth it. <laughs> Just genetically speaking, millions of Snookies, one Beyonce. Let's clap. Wow, you guys. <laughs> Machine, these are my podcast fans. Really? Yeah, this guy wearing a Just Glass and shirt, and he just yelled Machines within. It's all, they're all inside jokes from your mom's house. The, the, what, the podcast that you do with your husband, right? Yes, Tim Seguera. Have you heard Tim of him? Segu yeah. <laughs> do you guys, you guys record that in your house? In your... Well, we did originally. It started in a crappy house in Silver Lake, uh, California, and now we have a proper studio. A converted garage that's like a nice studio. So it's a studio that looks like a house. Yeah. Okay. It's awesome. And it's great to be able to work in your underwear. Like, that's, that's all I've ever wanted. Have you guys ever uh, sort of, like, started a conversation that you were doing on the podcast, and then you took it up to a certain notch for the sake of the podcast, and then it bled over once you were done recording? Oh, you mean, like, getting into fights? Yeah. Yeah. Like, you, you, uh, like when, you're, when you're on stage <laughs> or when you're doing a podcast, sometimes you take on an opinion just for the sake of, like, yes. butting yes. heads and yes. creating yes. conflict, and yes. then... When that's over, it's like, what the fuck were you talking a about? A thousand. You said the F word. Yeah. Um, I was trying. I was allowed. I was letting you know that it's allowed. <laughs> well, motherfuck, you're right because <laughs> it's happened before where Tommy has it, what you what you just said taken a position just to be contrary, and then I was like, what the fuck, bro? Like, I'll press pause on the recording and be like, what are you talking about? Did you really mean that? I fucking hate you. I'll never sleep with you again. And then you know, but we we delete those parts just so you know. We edit them out. Yeah. Do you, does, uh, you know, being married to a stand-up and being a stand-up and doing a podcast with it, does that ever get in the way of a healthy relationship at all? Or is it sort of so much a part of who you are? No, it's totally healthy. I mean, show business. <laughs> it's just a good industry to be in. Like, especially if you have low self-esteem or, like, mom issues. No, it's, um... <laughs> uh, you know, one with mom issues, right <laughs> off the bus, you're going to be great. Just drink that bus in there, <laughs> yes. hop off, first person yeah. you meet, they're going to make you famous. Yeah. Do you Just hate your parents? It. Go to L.A. <laughs> Get into showbiz. Um, yeah, well, here's the thing. I think it works between Tom and I because we started at the same time. Like, we, we literally were open micers together, and we came up together. So we've always been happy for one another when good things have happened. And now it's like, hey, man. All that money goes into the same bank account. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> who cares who's making it? Like, no one's gonna be jealous of who's having a better year because it's all gonna be good. <laughs> who gives a shit? I'm happier when he's doing well. That means I don't have to work. I don't have to get on a plane. <laughs> good, please get everything you want. Mom doesn't want to go to Toledo in January. You know, so especially now we have a kid. So, but our private life is actually very quiet. We're we're very mellow. Very boring. I mean, super boring. And I like that, though. Because this is chaos, right? This is insanity. Who does this for a living? <laughs> when did you start doing stand-up? Um, I was 26 years old. I'm 41 now. I, what's the math? I don't know. <laughs> 15 years. I, I studied philosophy. I don't know. Um, yeah, so like 20, 23, I started The Groundlings. And um, that's where they teach you to do characters and then make you pretend that you're in rooms, like, do your space work. And I was like, oh, pfft, all right. <laughs> you know, you're in a donut shop. What's in a, I can't. Explore this, the space. Yeah. Explore the sp yes, really, really take your time. Really take your time. Yeah. Explore the space. <laughs> Explore it. Such nonsense. Because I think I was a very angry, angry youth. I was very punk rock, and I wanted to say some shit, man. So I knew that stand-up was going to be for me. I just, I, I, I was so full of rage, and I... <laughs> Which is why you go into comedy, to spew your anger into something creative, right? When did, that has that rage subsided, or do you yeah. still hold it? No, I see a therapist once a week. When did you... Because <laughs> I, I absolutely relate to the rage of, oh, yeah? of a teenager. Yeah, but when did it subside for you? Because it's, it's, for the most part, 
No, somewhat subsided for me, I would say. Yeah. You, well, you have to have, I think, some kind of edge in you to do something creative. There's something inside of you. You know, Bukowski didn't write great books because his childhood was awesome. So, no, but I think, I think around um, 34, I think I kind of was like, all right, this isn't about mommy or daddy. You know, it's my, I got to assume responsibility for this anger and channel it into something. I mean, I wrote this when I was literally uh, in the throes of postpartum depression, like breastfeeding our son at four in the morning, just like, you motherfucker, I'm going <laughs> to, you know, not, not my baby, motherfucker, my husband. I thought you, you were know? talking about the- Not my baby. Oh, I'm going to no, get you. No, I'm going to get you. <laughs> I'm not a sociopath, you guys. I just I have feelings that are inappropriate. But, um, <laughs> yeah. So, but, uh, you know, it came out of the darkest... Place, the, and then you make it palatable. Our, yeah. When when uh, I guess it's it's hacky to ask about standups being made, but it is interesting that you said you write you a lot of this was written about your husband, and when you watch it, there are a lot of jokes about your husband. Yeah. Specifically, uh, there's a great bit that you talk about just no more blowjobs for husbands. <laughs> uh, but w- I'm curious when he watches it. Obviously, standups know that each other are joking, yeah. but the jokes are coming from a real place. Yeah. Is there even moments where even though he knows you're joking, he turns to you and goes, do you feel that way? <laughs> um, well, st- we, know that, we know that the jokes come from the irrational thought, the irrational feeling. And yes, I have been like, do I not give you enough hand jobs? Like, cause uh, you know, he'll he'll do he'll do ten minutes on you know our sex life being terrible, and I will be like, is this okay? Are you okay? Uh, and that's all you have to do is is check in. Right, just communicate. Right, yeah. Are you married? No, I'm engaged. Okay. Oh, that's right. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's exciting. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, wow! Can I, can I be, wow! What can, a lucky lady! <laughs> I, I think we both. I think we both want the engagement to be over because neither of us want a wedding. So every time Ye- we're with family, it's like, what are you gonna do? What's it gonna be? Where are you gonna go? And we're like, I don't want. We actually do not really care that much. So how do we get this done? So we're at this point where it's like, it's wonderful to be engaged, but we're also like, let's just fucking get the thing over with. It's and just the get worst. Weddings are the fucking worst. Don't ever. <laughs> no one tells you that. <laughs> Because the planning, and then your shitty family comes. Their shitty family comes. Oh, you have to feed these people. Do it as far away as possible. Make sure it's a two-plane ride. That's what we all do. Gonna, <laughs> and they're all going to complain no matter what. Like, I've never seen parents walk away from a wedding yeah. and have no complaint. Yeah. Anyone over the age of 45 that goes to a wedding walks away being like, I don't know about that chicken cordon. Yeah. Oh, that was shit. They have fucking critiques for your wedding. Unbelievable. Motherfucker, that was free food. Yeah. I paid for it. Yeah. There's music and free booze. Um, what was your wedding like? It was an, I'm telling you, it, we did it in the Bahamas. It was a two-planer, so you really wanted to go to that. <laughs> and it was remote island. Like, Were there a lot of casual. stand-ups there? Uh, yeah, there's a few comics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's it Couple. like with comics at a, at a wedding? Because I feel like Best. they can't really give the positive... <laughs> like the, you look so beautiful. What a beautiful ceremony. No, no, no. There's no feelings. Like our friends, <laughs> we just had comics over for Thanksgiving and it, it, it degraded into like a room full of dudes hammered at midnight being like, you fucking get on Tinder. You like writing each other's. <laughs> My husband was answering some Tinder text for another comedian friend. Like whatever. It, it degrades. It's never, like, no one gave thanks for anything. It was drunk and irate. But I don't, I don't feel comfortable with touchy-feely. Yeah. I mean, isn't it gross? Like, it feels weird. I hate when people, like, share genuine feelings with me. I get really upset. <laughs> I'm like, oh, stop it. I think there's a time and the place. There's, like, one moment that everybody can do it on a holiday where, like, you can yeah. take, everyone can take a moment and be like, hey, thanks so much for coming out, everybody. This is really nice to, yeah. to have you here. But it's when someone goes... Hey, you know, it's been a while since we've hung out. You're like, fuck. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just wanna, I just wanna let you know. No, 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 no. Like, yeah, we, I, we need to talk. Can we talk? That's the worst. Yeah, please don't talk to me. <laughs> it's the worst when there's a deep sigh before we need to talk. That's oh. usually like a, a wife or a. Fe- <sighs> we need to talk. Oh shit. No, let's not. Let's just repress these feelings. Push them down. I talk to my shrink. I don't need to talk to anyone. Uh, you said that you were writing this while you were in postpartum. How yeah. were? How long were you performing it before actually doing the special? What was your process? Oh right. Yeah. Okay. So, 
It's very, <laughs> my process as an artist. <laughs> uh, silly. No, I, I went to the comedy store. I popped him out, my, my beautiful son, Ellis. And within a month, I was back at the comedy store because I was just like, <laughs> you know, if I don't do stand-up for a while, I get, I get, I get weird. And I'm like, why? You know, weird how? I just get real cagey and depressive. And then I'm like, oh, it's because I haven't, like, done the thing that I need to do to feel okay. So, like, a month after... And then I just worked it out at the comedy store because I wasn't traveling because I just had a baby. Um, so in 20-minute chunks at the store, like every weekend, I would just go. And I know I've been doing it long enough that I can kind of figure it out quicker, quicker now. Um, I mean, and then there's other bits that I've been doing for years. Right. So it was kind of both. So you do 20 minutes, try like essentially 20 minutes, a new 20 minutes kind of every weekend? Yeah, that's what I'm doing now. So because now you have to start from scratch. So I just go down the comedy store and I write like 20-minute chunks. And then bang bang, you know. And do you write? Uh, do you write at home? You write at home and then take stuff there and try to perform it. You're not like yeah. sort of riffing on stage and see what you come up with. <laughs> no. Yeah, I mean, I guess there are some people that do that. I call yeah, those. Some people p- have said that. I'm like, I think you're lying. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. Because yeah. I, I also feel an obligation to the audience. Like you've paid for babysitters and for tickets to come see me like I'm gonna give you a show I'm not gonna go I'm just gonna riff like how irresponsible is that to people but usually the comics who get on stage are like whoa <laughs> like oh yeah you're riffing you're just screaming a bunch <laughs> yeah no I'm very I'm very deliberate I'm very methodical I like to think things through and work them out and yeah has there ever been a joke between uh about you your your husband or, or your son that you just didn't feel like you could tell yeah Nothing may, I hate, I hate when people are like, my son did the funniest thing. You're like, no one cares. It's, all you care is when your kid does it for you, right? Like, I don't, uh, whatever. Where are you going? Okay, that's just funny stuff. She works here. She's okay. She's trying to do stuff. No. Um, but I never want to be that comic that's like, and then he came up to me and was like, mama, I made a poo in the potty. Like, uh, like, to me, that's just so like no one wants that. Family circus, yeah. Like, ugh. I'm shocked when people want that in private conversations <laughs> with other people. I'm, you know, I don't understand ah, people who want to talk Ricky. about positive experiences. I love you. You're my soulmate. I think. <laughs> Bye, Tom. Bye, Tom. Oh my gosh, you should be a comic. You're, oh my you're, God, you think? Yeah, no. you're dark. You're dark. <laughs> Don't give me bad ideas to go embarrass myself on Tuesday nights when I can be hanging out with my fiance watching Netflix. There you go. See, you've got the soul of a stand-up. Yeah. Yeah, you have to be miserable like that a little bit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Shit, maybe. No. Yeah. Uh, what was the first time you did stand-up like? Well, uh, it's kind of neat. I had diarrhea all day. Because I just knew that... that uh, yeah. Well, the first seven years in stand-up, I had the cleanest bowels in show business because I would get so nervous... I would Everybody shit knew. all day. Did they introduce you that way? Christina P., the cleanest balls in show business, everybody. <laughs> no, but they should have. But I would wake up knowing, like, oh, I got to go down to the comedy store. I'm, I'm going to do the belly room or whatever tonight. And I would just, like, all day. And I would run over my set, and I would write the set list on my hand and be like, <laughs> I'm a perfectionist. That's, you know, what I deal with. So the first time I did it, and I was shaking and nervous, but I got it out. And it was just good enough. It was just good enough to where I was like, okay, I think I can do this. I think this is my thing. So the first time you did it, you didn't bomb or anything. You no. It was pretty comfortable. I wow. didn't eat total shit. It wasn't great. It was just good enough to keep me going back for more. <laughs> yeah, not good, not great. Just, you know, just enough that I got enough laughter to go, okay, this is great. Because I think you have to enjoy the suffering of it, as with anything. That's why they always say, do what you love, do what you love. It's not, it's not some magic recipe for success, because you won't always succeed if you just love it. But it's that thing that keeps you coming back to the well of suffering. You'll just have something to do if you do something <laughs> that you love. That's yeah, the thing. Right, right. It doesn't mean you're going to make a million dollars. You'll just have something to do. <laughs> something that you, do, that you enjoy the process. Yes. Yeah, the process, yeah. So you kept going back because you, your first time wasn't a, a, a deep enough ditch to not yeah. feel like you could ever crawl out of it. Right, right. <laughs> just decent enough. I did it once. It was a deep, 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 deep ditch. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm never going to get out of that one. Where did you do it? I don't open mic in the East Village. That's that's why. Yeah, it was all comics there who had like good material, and I was like, I, I everything went red at the end in my eyes, <laughs> and I just kept going, and they were flashing lights, and eventually, get off the stage, and I was like, oh yeah, 
I've been on here for like seven minutes. I gotta go. Oh. <laughs> with no one laughing, with no one laughing. But that's brave. And then, and then, and then. <laughs> that's so brave that you went on despite the not, did you get sweat, the flop sweat? So much yeah. sweat. That's fun. Huh? So much sweat. <laughs> when, <laughs> do you still get that when, when, do you still get that at performances sometimes? Um, only if I'm headlining, so I'm, up, I'm obligated to do an hour with these people and I take a risk, like I might tell that new joke about Harvey Weinstein or something, and it's <laughs> risky. What is your new joke about Harvey Weinstein? <laughs> <laughs> Not here. Uh, you know, and it's like a Christian corporate event, and I was like, maybe not here. And they <laughs> stick to the Catholic Church stuff with that one. <laughs> yeah. And then Jesus, was, and then uh, so to try to dig yourself out of that one is like, oh shit. Uh, and then I'll sweat a little, and then you. But I've done it. I've 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 screwed up enough that I know how to do it now. You just flip it on them. That's my secret. Hey, look at this fucking guy. <laughs> Am I right, beards? <laughs> What's he up to? <laughs> and then. Yeah. What has it been like uh, in the in your comedy scene? I guess I mean if you're even sort of still part of a scene, you kind of talk about you just sort of go home and don't really do much. Uh, in the wake of uh, I saw you and Tom talking about this on your podcast. In the wake of Louis C.K. and really in the all of this industry because it is a weird kind of like I mean every industry has like creepy dudes. I know, right? And it's like we all knew it. Yeah, <laughs> it's always been creepers. Yeah, and and I mean every industry, every place has creepy dudes. Yeah. it's just the thing. Yeah, I mean there's some girl sitting in a cubicle right now, uh, and some guy is like, "You want a shoulder rub?" Because that, there's that guy that just gives you shoulder rubs, and uh, <laughs> right. I'll we'll call that the Lauer. Oh, is that what he got? No, I don't for? know. I, I don't know. I Something. can't wait to find out what he yeah, did. Hard. How is Matt Lauer a sexual predator? I feel like I have a bigger dick than him. <laughs> Why is he get? What's he doing? Usually it's the small dicks that are sexual predators, though. He, you know, no. you're right. Because we had um, Dr. Drew on, on, Dr. Drew, uh, on our podcast. We were talking about power and the idea that this is about power. Mm -hmm. These sexual, aggressive dudes. It's, it's mommy. Mommy who messes you up and then you take it out on some woman. Which is Power and like notches in the belt as well. Yeah. yeah. Fuck. <laughs> wait, so wait, what did you ask me? What is it? What sort of, uh, I guess the, the, the question is, is, it, is there a lot of conversations uh, yeah. uh, through, with all comics? Like, yeah. who's next? Don't name names, obviously. I know. <laughs> but like, who's next? And like, even friends of, friends of comics who are like, because there is a, I think, in the comic world, and I'm making a gross assumption right Go now, ahead. that there is a kind of uh, a leeway a little bit for certain types of behavior because you are weird, fucked up people yeah. exploring yes. your own misery and sadness. Yeah. I mean, look, the Al Franken picture, everyone's done that. Like, we've all, who hasn't done the, the titty grab picture? Um, His dumb face. Yeah, like, <laughs> if, if that to me, that's like, that's a comic. That's what we do. Yeah, like um, an old Catskills comic. Like, that's a movie. <laughs> like, it's ridiculous. I love your laugh. You're like, my, this is a great guy. I right know. Here. He's a fan. He's a podcast fan. They're the best. They're the best. Can you just come to all of these? This would be amazing. <laughs> it's confusing, and I don't know what to make of it yet. And yes, we talk about it all the time. And I do have a scene, the comedy stories, where we all kind of go and, like, can you believe that? But everyone knew about the Louis thing for a while. We all kind of knew. And, but who knows if it's true? And who knows what? I mean, you know what I'm saying? You don't know what the real stories are. You do when you... I don't, I don't, I'm so confused. I'm still confused. Yeah. I confu it, I'm confused, too, there, but there is a part of me that's kind of like, well, go ahead. Get out of here for a little while. <laughs> like, you, you, you did fine. Scram. Yeah. Well, he's got, he's got enough money. He should be Yeah, fine. same with Matt Lauer. He's making yeah. $20 million a year. <laughs> are you fucking serious? $20 million a year! <laughs> And what did he do on that? It was just like, you should hey, be, good morning, guys. Yeah. He should be let go for making $20 million. In right. Yeah, I don't care if he sexually assaulted anybody, <laughs> really. The network made it up just to get rid of him, probably. <laughs> get him off payroll. That guy's making too much money. We pay him $20 million for what? Welcome to the show. Yeah. What a great gig. You don't have to... You're telling me. ...leave town or write things. <laughs> think stuff. Write any <laughs> yeah. You get to go to the Olympics. That's it. Yeah. That's what you leave town for. Oh, forget it. I'm out. That's <laughs> so boring, right? Uh, let's get some questions from the audience. Who has a question? Anyone? Oh, I do. Hi, oh. Mommy. <laughs> Who are we going with? I don't know. Um, here. Right here. Okay. Um, can you talk a little bit about the painting and the title card? You're adorable. Thank you for asking. What's your name? Philip. Hi, Philip. Yeah, I'll tell you. So this, uh, first of all, my agent hated it um, when I pitched this idea, because this is actually based on fan artwork, a fan of your mom's house 
I think his name was, his column, whatever, is Doc J. Back. And this guy has suffered from PTSD. And he made this wonderful portrait of me as the Virgin Mary holding our dog, Theo. <laughs> and, uh, and I thought, that's such a funny image. And I really like the idea, uh, you know, because motherhood is still put on a pedestal. And women, there's so much pressure to be perfect at it. And, and I did feel that. So I wanted to kind of play with that imagery of the Virgin Mother. Um, and that's my little baby, Ellis. And, uh, yeah. Isn't the pressure to be a perfect mother such a strange thing, just consistent of, like, it's such a fluid thing, and there's no idea what actually perfection means, and you have no idea what the future is going to hold for this child, so how would you know what you're doing right now is perfect for that? What well, is smart. perfection? Wish I would have fucking thought of it that way. <laughs> I literally, I just thought of it. God, that's so smart. Well, and also that um, you're just a person having a child, and I think the expectation is you know, as a woman that you, you have a baby and all of a sudden like a mist washes over you and it's amnesia of the life you had before and the personality. So, really? yeah, I, I felt there, yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, I was in this mommy and me class and this lady was breastfeeding her three-year-old and <laughs> I'm sorry, 152 week old or whatever. And um, three, Her three-year-old? Yeah, it's a, that's, a lo- that's a lot of duty. Like, you can tap out after one year. That's what they recommend. But this bitch was like, I'm on three... I'm overachieving. So I think there's a lot of that pressure to... My mom didn't breastfeed me. And you're fine, right? I asked her, I was like, why didn't you do it? She was like, I didn't like it. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, good for you, mom. (laughs) I'm okay with don't succumb to the pressure. Yeah, but maybe it's self I mean, maybe I felt the pressure because my mom was kind of crazy. So I wanted to be great at it, but I don't know. You just have to love them, right? And don't let them eat hot wings for dinner. Don't let him play with rat traps and stuff. I mean, yeah. Uh, next question, right here. Hi, mommy. Hi, Christina. Hi, How's it going, Gene? Just glassing. <laughs> uh, so uh, you've been a comic for for a number of years. Yeah. Like the days before Uber, you would go and tour in some bumfuck city out in the middle of nowhere. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know that sounds really hard. And uh, here you are now with a special on Netflix. You have a, a young baby. You know you're uh, you're still traveling. You're in New York. How do you have the stanima to keep up all this? <laughs> Interesting <laughs> to keep question, your jeans sir. High and tight. <laughs> My jeans are so tight, um, and I do have the stanima. Thank you for asking, because I eat lots of moose soup. I figured. It's the only way to, to go. Makes sense. <laughs> These are inside jokes for the podcast. Yeah, it's so yeah. silly. Yeah, it's the best. It's the best. It's the best. We have a whole language to our podcast, and that was a question like that. What's moose soup? It's disgusting. No. It was, a, it was a video of this lady in, I think, Canada, maybe? And she was like, come down later for moose soup. And we ended up having a Michelin star chef make it for us at the Patina restaurant in L.A. And it was amazing. It was actually very, very tasty. But it's a, it's a soup with veggies and chunks of moose in it. Oh, wow. Moose yeah. soup. Literally, yeah, moose. Oh, I thought it was moo soup. No, bro, it's moo soup. <laughs> <laughs> moo soup. <laughs> yeah, okay, I know. got it now. Yeah, but you know, people eat like deer and snake and shit. It's not that. I mean, it doesn't taste good, but. <laughs> right? Let's get another question. Uh, last meat, question. Moose right meat, here. I mean. Hi. Hi. So, what would be your advice to like somebody uh, who's very young and um, going out for their first time to do. St- uh, a performance, like a, a, sta- a stand-up performance in front of, like, a lot of people, but yet they have, like, stuttering problems or yeah. they get, like, nervous jitters. What would be your advice for that? that is the question um, how to get rid of those jitters or how to deal with the jitters, or what do you... All right, I'll give you both. Okay. Now, thankfully, I don't have that stuttering issue, but I think it's exacerbated by being nervous, right, or, or being in a situation that's foreign. And I don't know why people do stand up for the first time in environments that are hostile. Like that open mic environment was probably really hostile because open mic or comics can be really shitty. And then in the back of the room chuckling when you're failing, it's just what we do. We laugh at failure. Yeah. (laughs) The same thing if I wasn't doing, if I wasn't doing, (laughs) would have made fun of me. Right. Like they're kind of jerky. And for you, I, and I know this is so taboo in the comedy world. Why not just take a class, do it only once don't go back to the well. That's the problem. I say learn, go to a class, learn the structure of stand-up, and then go out into the world and unlearn all that shit that you learn. But you got to know 
the bones. How do you write a joke? What's a premise? What's a setup? What's a punchline? And then your first show will usually be at the end of that class. So you're amongst people that you've been working with and you're supported and your family might show up if you want them to. And you invite, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> and you invite your friends so that you're supported the first time. And then you might feel more comfortable and you maybe won't stutter as much. Or maybe incorporate the stuttering into your act. The worst thing you can do is fight who you are. I mean, for so many years, people were like, why don't you show your boobs? You've got great, why don't you doll up? And I was like, I will blow my brains out <laughs> if I have to, you know, curl my hair and be like, it's not who I am. So make it you. Like, if you're that guy that stutters, that's in your act. I don't know, I hope that helps. Thank you. Go do it, kid. <laughs> Live your dreams. Uh, Christina, the uh, Mother Inferior is on Netflix right now, yes. right? And the podcast, uh, mom's house. our mom's house. You Your know. mom's house, Rick. I was doing so well. I was doing so well. Uh, your mom's house, people can find it on iTunes, right? Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Anything else that we should tell people to... Oh, That's look? Deep Bro. I have a podcast called That's Deep Bro. I have a degree in philosophy, <laughs> which is so useless. Where's your, where's your degree from? University of San Francisco. Oh, nice. Yeah. What made you study philosophy? Just being useless in the world. Your, who, was your, who was your favorite philosopher? I love the existentialists, the French ones, like Jean-Paul Sartre and... Is that how you... Sartre? 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 Albert, Albert Camus. Do you like philosophers? Mm -hmm. Who's your favorite? Uh, I always liked Camus. Uh, mm. I liked Nietzsche. And, Love him. Um, He's fun. I, I'm trying to... Rousseau. Yes. Yeah. Oh, Kierkegaard. I loved Fear and Desire. Really? Yeah, that's one of my really? favorites. Really? Yeah. He's really dense... I'm surprised you can understand that stuff. I, mean, I, could never, I could never quote it, and I could never tell you what Fair and Desire is about, but I remember reading it and being like, I like this. <laughs> That's probably all I took from it. Wow, well, good for you. That's as long as you take something from it. Yeah. You know? I like That's this. Point. Uh, Christina P., everybody. Thanks for Give her a round of applause. Thank you, Mommy.